إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين اللهم صل على محمد في الآخرين اللهم صل على محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek his blessings and his guidance and we send our salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family and his companions and all those who follow their way until the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ O believers, have the awareness of Allah that He is deserving of. And do not die unless in a state of being a Muslim. فَإِنَّ أَسْتَقُ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَشَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْتَثَاتُهَا وَكُلُّ مُحْتَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ وَبَعْدِ One day, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Usama bin Zayr radiallahu anh, they were having a conversation. And a conversation that took place between Usama radiallahu anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in order to understand more deeply about this conversation and what the implications are of this conversation. Firstly, who was Usama bin Zayd of Allah? Who was Usama? Usama was the son of Zayd bin Harith, who was the adopted son of the Prophet. His name was Zayd bin Muhammad, and out of love, and Nabi named him that and adopted him. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, revealed in the Quran, Udu'uhum li abaihim hu aqsatu inda Allah, they call them by their, their father's names because that is more just to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The idea of adopting a child where the child takes the, the adopter's name was abolished. So his name was Zayd bin Harith. And even though he was taken out of that position of being the adopted son of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that love was still there. And Usama radiallahu anhu was like the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, it is mentioned that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would take the hand of Usama and take the hand of Hassan ibn Ali ibn Ali radiallahu anhu ma and he would say, Allahumma inni uhibbuhuma fa'ahibbahuma. That, oh Allah, I love them both, so love them both. Now in your mind you might be thinking, you have Hassan Allah and Usama about the same height, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is holding their hands. But the reality is, the, the age difference between Usama radiallahu anhu and Hassan radiallahu anhu was 10 years. 10 years. <coughs> so hypothetically speaking, if Hassan radiallahu anhu was 5 years old, Usama is 15 years old. So you have somewhat of a toddler, a child, and a teenager. And here, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is holding their hands together and saying, Allahumma inni uhibbuhuma fahibbahuma. Okay, maqal. Now, coming back to this question, Usama radiallahu anhu is being raised in the house of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
He's like the grandson of the of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he's seeing what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is doing throughout the year. And he says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, I see you fasting more in Sha'ban than in any other month. The fast you're doing in Sha'ban exceeds all the other months. Oh, it's interesting is that the ahadith, generally the ahadith that mention the fasting of the Prophet in Sha'ban is either coming from Usama or Aisha and they're both living in the house of the Prophet And before I tell you what the answer was of the Nabi I want you as a parent, as a parent, as a caregiver, as a teacher, I want you to pay attention to this. What's happening here? This this conversation between quote unquote a grandfather and a grandson. And by the way, during the lifetime of the Prophet, Zayd bin Halith was martyred in the Battle of Mu'ta. So and Nabi Sallallahu even carried that fatherly position for Usama as well. In fact, when the Prophet was passing away, before he passed away, he set an army in place and he made Usama the commander of that army. And Usama was 16 years old, 16 or 17 years old. And when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi passes away, the army is still at the outskirts of Medina waiting to be discharged to go towards the battlefield. And during that time, and I'm mentioning this so they have an understanding of what is happening as a parent. Your relationship with your child, that's why I'm mentioning all of these different points. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes Asama in charge, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passes away. And Abu Bakr Allahu is put in place. And the discussion comes, Ya Abu Bakr, Ya Abu Bakr, should we send the army at this time? When the power is being transferred from one individual who is a prophet to a man from the Muslims, how unstable that time is when power is being transferred over. On top of that, slowly but surely the Muslims or the tribes that accepted Islam all over the Arabian Peninsula are slowly leaving Islam. Some of them don't want to pay zakat. Others completely left the fold of Islam. So the discussion is happening, is this the best time to send the army or not? Abu Bakr Allahuan tells Umar Allahuan that I will not change the command of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The discussion comes, okay, we'll send the army. But the commander is a 16 year old child, a teenager. Change the commander at least so that we can have a, high, a higher odds in winning the battle. And the same reply comes again from Abu Bakr Allahuan, I will not change the command of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Going back to the hadith. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hears this question from Usama. And coming back to you as a parent, your actions speak louder than your words. A child is very intuitive, very accepting. In fact, a child looks at you as a father or as a mother as the ultimate truth. A child never questions their parents. <coughs> and they look at the actions of their parents as if it's gospel. If you understand that phrase. It's as if it's text, it's, it does not change. So everything you do in front of that child, that child is absorbing. Here, Usama Allah sees the Prophet Sallallahu throughout the year. And he's paying attention so closely to the Prophet that he figures out that the Prophet Sallallahu is fasting more in Sha'ban than any other month. And Nabi Sallallahu tells Usama Allah the Sha'ban is a month that a lot of people are Heedless 
of this month. They're heedless. They don't take this month as it's supposed to be taken. They don't take this, this month seriously as it is supposed to be taken. And he gives the reason why as well. He says, because it comes between Rajab and Ramadan. At that time, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, Rajab was the month, was a holy, sacred month. And I want you to picture this so that we can have an understanding of why it was so sacred. The Arab tribes were a warring bunch. They were always at war, fighting each other, civil wars, tribal wars. One area fighting the other area. And during the Ashhur al Hurum, which are the sacred months, and the Rajab being one of them, there was a peace. So people loved these months. They had very high sanctity for these months. In fact, an incident happened before the Battle of Badr where a companion fought a or attacked a tribe during or it was starting to begin the Ashur al Hurum, so he attacks a tribe. And then the, the entire community, not only the Muslim community, but even the disbelieving community, they became upset and they started getting angry. They're like, how can we kill someone during these months that are holy? And Allah reveals in the Quran, Yes, Allah reveals in the Quran, Haram and Qital and Fiqh, and Qital and Fiqh Kabir. Also, to the answer, the verse is with the Baqarah. Basically saying that, yes, it's a big deal that you're fighting in this month, killing in it this month is, is unacceptable. But what you've done by driving out the companions from their homes and stopping people from hearing the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worse than that. Coming back to the point. So in the month of Rajab, a mother will not hear or a wife will not hear that, oh, I'm widow widowed today. Or a child will not hear that I'm orphaned today, my brother was killed, my father was killed, my son was killed. So people love this month greatly. That's Rajab. Ramadan, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would, would switch and become a different person. The Sahaba would become different people. I was trying to think about what extra would the Prophet Sallallahu do because his whole life was ibadah to begin with. The companions, they're praying, praying the Rawatib, they're praying the Hajjid anyways, they're doing all these things to begin with. But they would increase even on top of what they were doing already. In fact, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is described as a Rih al Mursala. That when he would spend his generosity in the month of Ramadan, they could not describe it except as a cloud that brings rain wherever it goes, so that the crops can grow. Hadith comes in, the hadith, coming back to the hadith we're talking about. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says a lot of people don't pay attention to the month of Shabdan. Because it comes in between these two months. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi tells us something about this month. He says, in this month our deeds go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our deeds go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, on a daily basis our deeds go up. They're raised to Allah. Yes, on a weekly basis. Deeds go up, raised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyibah. They have to be good deeds, they can't be filthy deeds or deeds mixed with filth. Only good deeds go up. But there's as well, there is a raising of deeds during the month of Sha'bah. We can call this a yearly raising of deeds. Just like the Qadr, you have different stages of Qadr. Laylatul Qadr, yes, one of those nights you have the Qadr written down, but there's other times that Qadr is written down as well. Sha'ban, according to authentic, the authentic opinion, is that it's the month that the deeds go up. And Allah, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, I, I want my deeds to go up while I am fasting. I want my deeds to be raised to Allah while I'm fasting. That is why, Usama, I am fasting this month. Okay, The idea is, why is the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
<coughs> fasting while his deeds are going up. Very simply because of the time. It is because fasting is that ingredient you need to multiply your good deeds. What do I mean by that? Fasting is the secret of sincerity. It is the most sincere action you can do. Fasting is that action where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Hadith Qudsi, after mentioning all the different deeds, zakat, any good deeds multiplied 10 times, zakat up to 700 times. When it comes to fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Hadith Qudsi, as for fasting, I will reward the fasting person. Meaning that you cannot put a count, a number, on the amount of good deeds you can receive while fasting. Because you become a sincere person. This is the idea behind it. My brothers and sisters, this is the month that we have to revise our hearts before entering the month of Ramadan. We have to take a look at our hearts, the condition of our hearts, before we enter into the month of Ramadan. Yes, I can come and stand here and tell you, yes, you should fast in the month of Sha'ban. But why should I fast? What's the point of fasting? What's the point of fasting if it's not going to impact that heart of mine? What's the point of fasting if I do not recognize the purpose of fasting? It is a revisitation to our hearts, my brothers and sisters. In fact, to tie it to what we call in Urdu Shabirat or Nasr Sha'ban, all the ahadith are either da'if or mawdu' except for one hadith. There's one hadith which scholars, including, including Al-Bayhaqi and Shaykh Al-Bani rahimahullah, who have classified in either Hassan or Sahih Sahan al-Ibn Hanbal al-Bayhaqi. This hadith, it says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at his slaves on the night of the, of the 15th of Sha'ban. The night of the 15th of Sha'ban. And he forgives everyone except the one who has a disagreement, a fight, ill-hearted individuals. This is the point of Sha'ban. We need to recognize what is our state of our heart. If we can solve this problem first, once you enter into Ramadan, you will be on full force. You will be on driving gear with the accelerator on its full capacity. Once you recognize that you can forgive your brother, you can forgive your sister, you can forgive your father, your mother, you can forgive your children, you can forgive your parents, your relatives, the ones you don't like, those, those individuals, that uncle that, you know, that uncle that always badmouths you, or that auntie that keeps on back, back body about you. Those are the individuals we're talking about, not the one that meets you every single week for dinner. Connecting those hearts again. When you come to the masjid, when you stand with your brother, when you stand with your sister, your heart should be one. Why do we stand together so closely? Let us think about these meanings. It is because it's to impact our heart, brothers and sisters.